So what's wrong with networks such as this one putting terrorism experts, as they describe themselves, on the air in the aftermath of something like the Manchester bombing? I think that they can offer a very valuable perspective, particularly on military operations, but there should be transparency about where their paycheck comes from. In the U.S., we have many generals, colonels, and others who are actively on the payroll of defense corporations that are making money off of U.S. wars. And if they're on CNN or any of the networks and they're advocating for a particular military strategy that will benefit their corporations, that's extremely problematic, and I think it's very unethical. So then let's move it to the, the more recent case, which is the Manchester bombing. So is there any issue then in calling on these people for their expertise, maybe their analysis of what they see, because they're not calling for necessary military intervention, but rather reacting to what all of us are seeing. Right. I would put them into a slightly uh, different category, uh, the people that are non-military terrorism experts. There are some perfectly legitimate, smart people that have a background in foreign service, or they've worked in aid or the private sector internationally. They know the places they're talking about, or they are scholars who have studied a particular sect of Islam or a particular country that we're talking about. The problem is, particularly in the case of things like the Manchester uh, attack, and it's horrifying. Uh, you know, to, to to attack a crowd full of children is is just heinous. Um, but if you step away from, from the particulars of what was the bomb made of and which part of it, was it Al-Qaeda, was it ISIS, was it some other faction, and you look at the way that it's covered, it's almost like, I don't know if this is a thing in, in Canada, but when I was growing up, they, we had these things called sea monkeys. You pour this powder into water right. and then you have like these instant creatures that are sort of alive. I feel like that's what a lot of our expertise uh, actually amounts to in the immediate aftermath of these things. It's, it's the people that are willing to go on the air with almost no information and speculate. To me, that's not responsible journalism, and, and I think that it's problematic uh, when news outlets run with a preconceived notion uh, that these people are necessarily Muslims, that ISIS is going to claim responsibility, or that there is a such thing as ISIS as it appears in the nightmare of Western uh, societies today. ISIS in many ways is more like a franchise opportunity. Uh, I think there is a structure in places like Syria and Iraq where they have a command structure. But in general, many of these so-called lone wolf attacks, these are people who for individual reasons have been falling in life and they were caught by their particular interpretation of Islam and it's given them their life meaning in death. And I think that we have to spend a lot more time analyzing why these things are happening than just reacting every time they happen because I do think there's a way that we could responsibly report on this as journalists that would encourage a much more meaningful debate that we should be having in a democratic society about where these attacks and the motivations for these attacks are coming from. So in your view, they have to declare, first of all, who they work for now, not just their, their private background in Look, terms of whether they have military background and if they're being paid to be a commentator now. It's almost like a legitimized form of corruption when television networks invite private sector people on to advocate for their product without ever having to tell the viewer that that's what they're doing. And on top of that saying, general so-and-so, colonel so-and-so, it gives them this gravitas. When in reality, what they're primarily doing is functioning as a salesperson for their product or an advocate for their product that's gonna make them money with a little bit of analysis drizzled over it. But that analysis is going to be consistent with whatever is gonna make the money uh, for their product in US or international wars. It's an interesting take, thank you. Thank you.